Senator Vance. All right, thank you. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, NDSB Chair Hamandi. So you stated at Washington Post that train accidents, quote, train accidents in general per million train miles are going up, so it's trending upwards accidents. Is that true? I'll just go it's your call. Uh, the yard accidents rates are going up. The uh, mainline track rates are going down. Okay. Has a spill of vinyl chloride occurred before due, a, due to a, a freight train derailment? I'm sorry? Has a spill of vinyl chloride happened due to yes. one of these derailments? Yes, okay. sir. Pause, Borough. And, and do you remember the NTSB's recommendations at that time for a notification to first responders? Yes, sir. And what was that? We uh, had several recommendations, including uh, providing real-time information to emergency responders, making sure that they were adequately trained and provided the appropriate gear, uh, and that they were part of emergency planning with the locals and the railroads. And how long ago did you make that recommendation? Uh, 2013 was the accident. Okay, so I'll point out that, that nine years ago, we made a recommendation from the NTSB that they should provide proper notification to first responders. That still hasn't happened. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons, by the way, why we've advanced this legislation. Uh, I want to go next to, and thank you, Chair Hamadi, I want to go next to, 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 to Mr. Shaw. Um, Mr. Shaw, I, 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 I know that you have some disagreements about the precise distances necessary for uh, wayside bearing detectors and so forth. But I, I wonder, could you commit to supporting a mandatory standard for hot bearing detectors, even if not our specific limits? Could you submit to, to supporting one in principle, assuming we could get the limits right in your view? Yes, Senator. I, I ac absolutely appreciate your leadership and Senator Brown's leadership for the Railway Safety Act. And as we've talked about, there are a number of provisions in your bill with which we support. And it, it does include the wayside detectors. As you noted earlier, uh, we're not sure what the correct spacing is. It could be 10 miles, it sure. could be 15, could be seven. Yep. And I would, I would support using science and research and whatever is the right number, we would, we would space wayside detectors in that manner. Thank you. Uh, would, you would you commit to supporting mandatory first responder notification requirement as we do in the bill? Yes, sir, I certainly would. And I want to take the opportunity thank to thank our, the first responders from Ohio and West Virginia and Pennsylvania who showed the courage and the commitment to the community and rushed to the scene. And my appreciation for that is we just launched a regional first responder training facility in Ohio this week. And we have over 400 first responders who are signed up for it, including Chief Drabeck and four of his commanders. Great. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. We go to Mr. Whitaker now. So the railroad industry claims that visual inspections are nearly useless when it comes to journal bearings. Do you believe this is true? Thank you for the question. And I believe visual inspection is one of the most important aspects of inspecting a rail car. Also smell as well. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Is it true that railroads have used human inspectors for the bulk of their history and that a key part for a rail car being inspected is a journal bearing? That is correct. Can you inspect a rail car adequately in 30 seconds, Mr. Whitaker, or any of your workers? Absolutely not, sir. Uh, I would say rail car would take at least three minutes or longer, uh, all in the name of safety, especially if it's hauling hazardous materials. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Whitaker. And I, I want to pick up there and go to Mr. Jeffries here with the, the minute that I have rem remaining. The railroads have stated in regards to their opposition to tougher inspections, quote, increased time on a task does not necessarily correlate to increased safety. And to be fair, I think that's a, that's a fair argument to make. Mr. Whitaker just said three minutes. Uh, I don't think we should be mandating 20-minute inspections. But I don't want to make any requirement we institute a reasonable one so businesses can comply. Um, Mr. Jeffries, would you support a 30-second minimum in inspection time? I can't tell you what the right time is. I can be focused on outcomes and making sure that we are addressing issues. And if there's a, if there's a systemic or if there's a, a series of cases where uh, failures or malfunctioning equipment isn't being caught, we need to address that. And whether that's because there's not enough time allowed, because there's not appropriate training, because of some other factor, we absolutely need to address that. So I, I, I understand that, but I'm, I'm trying to get a specific commitment here. Do, do you think, we just heard from Mr. Whitaker, that he doesn't even think 30 seconds is enough time to properly inspect a railway, or excuse, excuse me, properly inspect a rail car. Uh, do you think 
30 seconds is enough to do an inspection, uh, would you support that as a mandatory requirement? Well, certainly not being the, uh, the technical expert, uh, it seems 30 seconds doesn't seem like a long time to do an MDEPS inspection. Okay, I appreciate that, Mr. Jeffries. Um, well, I'm out of time, and uh, I guess Acting Chairman Welch, I yield. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Vance. Uh, I think I'm next here. Uh, Mr. Shaw, uh, Ms. Hamidi uh, testified that this was a preventable accident. Do you agree? Yes, thank you for that question, Senator. Yes, I do agree. And in this industry... Stop. What should have been done to prevent it? Senator, in this industry, we have to look at every accident as if it were preventable. And in this case, we know that the Norfolk Southern crew did everything they were supposed to do, and we thank them for that. We know that the wayside detectors were operating as designed, and we know that there were no track defects. We know that Chair Hammondy's work is focused on a wheel bearing of a privately owned rail car that no railroad owns. And so improvements in safety are gonna require an industry-wide approach, which includes car owners, car builders, customers, and railroads. And Senator, many of those components are included in the Vance bill, the Vance Brown bill. 